What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of the FIFA 17 career mode. This is episode number 67 and we start today's episode off with a game against Bournemouth here at the Riverside Stadium in the Premier League. Very strong defence, the best defence in the division against a side that just can't find the back of the opponents. They're the lowest scoring side that we have in this company. They'll find it hard to get goals I think against a defence as strong as this one. Yeah, you would fancy them as long as they don't uh, take the foot off the gas. I can't see the visitors scoring here. And as we came into the episode opener here on the back of our 2-1 victory in Wales against Swansea in the last game in the last episode, I was definitely fancying my chances coming into this one as well. Bournemouth right now rock bottom of the Premier League and of course for us we are still well on course to wrap up the Premier League title at some point as we're still top of the table by several points. So coming into this game did decide to rest a lot of players for this one as well with so many fixtures coming thick and fast right now and also a game against Porto in the Champions League semi-final first leg in midweek did decide to rotate my squad a little bit but one of our usual first 11 players would start this game and score the opening goal as well just before the half time mark Mohamed Salah got his fourth goal of the Premier League season after Theo Bongonda played him the ball through Salah started off the season okay then for a while was unplayable since then he's been a little bit meh but this was his fourth goal and a pretty nice finish into the back of the net as we led by a goal going into half time so one goal up in this one but to be honest you can see by the stats right here it was a really really poor first half there was only one chance and we took it through Salah and in the second half there were very few chances as well Theo Bongonda wants to get in the heart of it though playing through Matt Target off the bench and the former Southampton left back fired the ball way over the bar so still 1-0 to the borough but really this game was all about defense Bournemouth could not break us down we were defending so well hardly a surprise of us being the best side in the league defensively speaking but for Bournemouth their defending wasn't too bad either but it's really because that's all they were trying to do they couldn't really get close to our goal in this game and when they did we snuffed out any kind of chance whatsoever and in stoppage time we went on the break here as Halilovic received the ball took it around Nathan Ake who went to ground played it through towards Ward-Prowse and James Ward-Prowse unlike Matt Target would be the guy to put the ball in the back of the net and secure the points late on so Middlesbrough 2 Bournemouth nil. this former Southampton player could find the back of the net as he wrapped the points up for us with an easy 2-0 victory and the reason why I say it was an easy 2-0 victory is because even though we didn't really uh, threaten too much in this game Bournemouth didn't threaten at all. You'll see when the match stats in just a moment's time. They didn't register a shot in the entire game, which really is embarrassing. And okay, don't get me wrong here. We're top of the table. They're bottom of the table. Our season this year has been all about defense. As you guys know, we've uh, kept so many clean sheets this year and uh, barely conceded. To be honest, only a few goals really uh, conceded in the Premier League this season. We've been so good defensively. No surprise, Heinz will man the match for this game. But for Bournemouth to not register a single shot in the game really was embarrassing. And I discussed it actually in my uh, latest episode of Common Country as well, uploaded yesterday evening. You know, I, I feel like this year's legendary. It is better than last year. I think the gameplay is better than FIFA 16. Anything would be an improvement on FIFA 16. Last year's game was the worst FIFA of all time, in my opinion. But I still feel like the AI are way too passive. And that game summed it all up, really. We were, we were leading the game in the first half, albeit close to the halftime mark. Yet Bournemouth didn't register a single shot in the entire game. Still, for the second game of the episode here, we will take on Porto in the chat. Champions League and this was going to be a tougher game no doubt about it as we welcome the Portuguese side to the Riverside Stadium for the first leg of our Champions League quarterfinal really excited for this game of course we knocked out Bayern Munich in the previous tie so I was fancying my chances here and did decide to put a couple of players back in the team that missed out of the game against Bournemouth on the weekend Adama would start this game as well and he was the uh, first player to record a shot in this game in the 28th minute this shot being blocked and then the second attempt going wide at the post but then 10 minutes for the break here as we win back through Salah, he finds Will Hughes, Hughes rolls it through towards Diego, starting in the cam roll, he found Callum Wilson, and Wilson found the back of the net, and the cameraman to celebrate as well, the former Bournemouth striker, firing us into the lead in the first half, and for Diego as well, you saw how well he played in the cam roll against Swansea, he didn't feature against Bournemouth, so I thought, do you know what, I'll put him in the cam roll for this game as well, tonight against Porto, and what a decision, so it was a great ball through towards Callum Wilson, who set himself with one 
one touch, then set himself with the left foot and fired it in off the post to make it 1-0 to the bar in a controlled first half, really, as we had 55% possession, six shots and 5-1 target as well. And in the second half, just 10 minutes after the restart here, once again, it's Diego playing a great through ball. This time, to play the, play the ball out wide towards Josh Onoma off the bench here. The former Spurs man sprints inside the area, rolls it inside, and there is Wilson for his second goal of the game to make it Middlesbrough 2, Porto 0. And once again, it was Diego at the heart of things, really. Great ball out wide towards Josh Onoma, who rolls it inside, and there is Callum Wilson just outside the six-yard box, who strokes it between the legs of the goalkeeper, Nats, to make it 2-0 to the Borough. So Wilson with the goal, and we lead by two. With 10 minutes to go, Porto look for that away goal to keep themselves in this game. Had a good chance here as well. We were standing off, just containing, really, and eventually as they worked the ball inside here, the shot was well saved by Donnarumma to deny Corona and turn it onto the roof of the net for a corner. So brilliant stop there by the Italian. And from the corner, once again, we failed to really deal with it. We're containing, not only to lunge in here inside our own area and give away a silly penalty, just trying to block any kind of shot. Did the first time, but once again, Porto managed to get the ball inside. And again, look at the shielding here. Couldn't get the ball off them here. And it's Ricardo Pereira inside towards his man. And the shot, once again, is well saved by Donnarumma and turned behind for another corner. And that was how the game would finish. Middlesbrough 2, Porto 0. So just like the last game, defense really was the key for us in this one. Donnarumma making a couple of really good saves as we held on for the 2 0 win. And Porto in the second half really stepped their game up as well. In the first half, did very little. In the second half, were the better team. But I felt we deserved the win anyway. Did get it by two goals to nil. And Callum Wilson's brace separates the sides and puts us 90 minutes away from a place in the Champions League semi final. So that's what the board wanted at the start of the season. They told us reach the Champions League semi final. Well, we're 90 minutes away from doing just that if we can hold on to this 2 0 aggregate lead going into the game in Portugal. But still, following the game, I did decide to accept a job offer as well. Yes, the Spanish FA came to us a few episodes ago, said, Will you manage our nation? And I was like, mm, Don't really know, to be honest. But unlike other nations that offered me the job, I didn't reject it flat out. I did decide to stall it and consider it. And as you can see, I accepted it eventually as well, just before uh, the, uh, the, the, the time allowed me to accept the job would expire. So I've taken a Spain job at the top of their World Cup qualifying group, just one win away from qualifying as well. Or is it two wins now? I can't remember. I think it's two, actually. They've got eight games played. So they're two wins away from qualifying. And yeah, I, I, I don't know why I took the job. I really don't. I guess I just thought to myself, I do want to manage your nation at some point in this series. The Spain job is the only one so far that's interested in me. We can have Diego playing for us. I just, I don't know why. I think it would be quite interesting to manage them. We haven't won since the, uh, the World Cup back in 2014. So I think it would be kind of interesting to manage them and see what we can do with the Spanish national team. But for the third and final game of the episode here, we will take on Watford away at Vicarage Road. And once again, Menendez would start in the cam roll. I think I'm going to keep him there from now on as he's looking very good right now playing through the middle. As we took on Watford here, we were just two wins away, possibly, if results would go our way from wrapping up the Premier League title. So this was a really, really important game for us here as we tried to get the three points here and extend the winning streak right now. First chance fell to us, but the goalkeeper made a very good save. And in the 20th minute here, Menendez rolled it through towards Theo Bongo who's been in the team of late and looking pretty decent in the games he started. He got an assist in the first game against Bournemouth and would now score the opening goal of this game here as well, 90 minutes in to make it 1-0 to the Borough. But the guy that got the assist was the guy that got the assist for our first goal against Porto as well, Diego Menendez, rolling it through to the Belgian who did the rest. And I've got to say, you guys really are geniuses. You told me to play Ryan Taylor on the right wing. That was when he turned out to be an absolute beast for us in my walk for the Milan save. You told me to play Menendez as Cam well look what's happening he's really profiting right now playing through the middle and playing so much better after this position change so we led by a goal going into the break we were the better side in the first half and then the second half almost scored directly from kickoff as well Theo Bongonda like I said looking very good of late sprints down the right hand side a brilliant run from the Belgian tries to chip it into the centre can't do so but it comes straight back to him he tried his luck but uh, he went for goal in the near post but the goalkeeper made the save and turned it behind for a corner Diego took the corner whipped it into the middle Heinz won it but once again it was a Another really good save with the goalkeeper though, keeping his Watford side in the game. To be honest, Watford really weren't looking good at all. You can see the top left right now. He was keeping their side in the game as the defense was really, really poor. And from the throw, they surrender possession so cheaply. Give it straight to Diego, who takes it around his man with a scoop turn, whips in with that five-star weaker left foot and finds Callum Chambers and the former Arsenal and Southampton right back, who stayed forward for the attack after the corner was dealt with, was on the end of this Diego cross and heads it past the goalkeeper to 
to make it 2-0 to the Borough. So he then go back to his position in defence. He stayed forward for the attack, and I'm so glad he did. Menendez's cross finds him at the far post, and he heads the ball in to double our lead. So Watford nil, Middlesbrough 2, and I said this was such an important game for us. We're just two wins away from possibly wrapping up the Premier League title if results go our way in the other fixtures, and this was going to be a massive, massive victory if we could hold on to it. So 2-0 to the Borough, but Watford would get themselves back in the game straight from kickoff. They just passed the ball forward really simply, gave the ball to Pereira, but there was nothing simple about this finish. What a strike this was from the number 37. He receives the ball here and just levers it from just outside the area with the left foot, and Donnarumma is having an unbelievable season, but you can have two Donnarumma's in goal for that one. He was not going to make the save. What a strike, right into the top corner, and it is 2-1 as Watford half the deficit and get back in the game. We almost restored our two-goal cushion area in the 77th minute. That corner by Benendez was wet, uh, was wet, was met by Saido Berahino, but the save was made the near post as Watford stayed in this game, and from that they broke as well. Isaac Success got on the ball, got inside the area, found Decore, but what a save this was by Donnarumma to keep us leading as he keeps the shot out. So still 2-1 to the Borough. A few minutes later, though, another corner for Watford was taken by Pereira, their goal scorer. It was a poor one, which fell uh, found Tammy Abraham, our striker, who rolled it through towards Ward Prowse, who sprinted down the right-hand side. Sebastian Prodl did well to keep up with Ward Prowse here. The centre-back made the tackle, but came straight back to the former Southampton man. Inside towards Abraham, who started a counter-attack, through towards Diego, whose through ball found Saido Berahino, and with two and a half minutes on the clock, the former West Brom striker would put the ball in the back of the net, restore our two-goal lead, make it Watford 1, Middlesbrough 3, and wrap the points up in a massive game away at Vicarage Road. A great little ball through by Menendez into Saido Berahino, who I must say, since the second half of the season started, has been pretty inconsistent in his form, but that's a really important goal there to make sure we get all three points and get ourselves a massive, massive win with just a few games to go. And for Menendez as well, you'll see it in the top right right now with the speech bubble, three assists in a single game, a hat-trick of assists for Diego, and I've got to say, you know, thank you, seriously, thank you to you guys for telling me Menendez will be better in the cam position. How right were you? He's got so many assists this season, 11 in total in the Premier League, three in this game. What a performance from him, a big win for us. We stay top of the tail by several points, and we could be now just one win away if results go our way in the Chelsea game from being crowned champions of the Premier League with five Five games to go. But that will end today's episode of the FIFA 17 career mode, guys. So a massive thank you for watching. I really hope you have enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed today's episode, then please do leave a like. Likes are, of course, much appreciated and they really help the channel grow as well. Much love to you and have a fantastic Monday. And I'll see you for the next episode of FIFA 17 career mode very soon.